Today we're taking a look at the Sonim XP5. So the Sonim XP5 is a rugged device and we're gonna be taking a look at the hardware and the software of the device. The hardware is quite unique. It is a very rugged and actually very difficult to access device. It does have dual SIMs, however, as you will be able to see in the video. And in order to remove the back, you need a flat tool. It does have a camera, and I believe they also made a non-camera version, although I believe it is discontinued at this point. So if you were looking for that, it is a little bit of a bummer. It does have USB-C, but no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So that is a little bit difficult to swallow because of course with dumb phones, you want to see that, but you can use an adapter uh, right here for the USB-C and listen via USB-C headphones or USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter. It does have a couple of keys, the volume keys here on the side, and also a special key right here for different applications that they may use. It can also be remapped uh, as an SOS key, I believe we're going to take a look a little bit more in the software. It does work with Verizon. It does work with the different carriers. This one is the unlocked version that I bought from Amazon. This is Sony Lumcher that you see here. And you'll be able to see that you have three pans. You have the missed events. You have the messages. If you go up, you go to contacts down, you go to camera. And you also have mobile hotspot, quick toggles, Wi-Fi data, Bluetooth, things of that nature. We're going to go back torch, airplane mode, profile, silences. It's actually very good. From the hardware perspective, the device is it's very good. It feels very good in the hand and it is quite hefty. So I'm gonna compare it to something very small like the Light Phone 2. So it is a little bit bigger and definitely thicker, right? However, when you compare it to something bigger like what I showed you guys the other day, which was the uh, Pine Phone with the keyboard, you would think that the pine phone with the keyboard will be way more massive, but it's about the same thickness. Yes, definitely it is bigger. It does have a bigger screen, but here when you look at it, it's about the same thickness. And that is, uh, that is something that is, I don't know, it is quite funny to me. That something with the keyboard is as thick as the Sony MXP5. There's another version called the Sony XP5S. I actually thought that I ordered that one, but hey, it is what it is. It's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more recent. It does have better compatibility. And as far as I can tell, that one actually allows you to install Android applications. The Sony XP5 does not allow you, as far as I can tell. I've been playing around with it for the last couple of days, but nothing that I'm able to see whenever you go to settings and about phone, then you click here, build number and the seven times that does not get you to be a developer. And then you have to do the other things. Also, if you download straight up from, let's say the uh, browser, which works decently well, actually it's, it's very usable. Uh, it does have a mouse. So if you want to use it for, you know, searching something, it will get you there. Uh, it's very fast and it, it, since it's VoLTE, you're going to be able to use this device for the long term and it has fast speeds. Of course, let's look at something like um, GDP. Sure. Uh, right there, I clicked the, the tool and it just went back. But GDP, you're able to search around. It'll take you to Google and then you will be able to navigate pretty easily. Again, it's not something that you're gonna get addicted to because essentially it takes a, a long time to, to go over and zoom in, zoom out. You know, you can click the buttons here and there, but again, it's not going to be something crazy to use. You do have different profiles that you're able to activate. Uh, this right here should be able to activate it, but it's not doing it. Either way, you have a couple of different applications. You have messaging, which very usable. You're also able to send group text messages without any issues because it uses the Android layer and it does have T9 right there. Hello, my name is Jose. Let's go right there and select it. You can also change it. Uh, you can change the T9 or the languages that you're going to be able to use. I believe there is a setting for triple click, even though right now I'm not seeing it. Uh, right there it's changing at the top i just didn't see it so when you press the pound key it will change from abc to abc capital one two three t9 abc etc etc do not hit this key for deleting things but the c key so if you hit this key right here it will take you to discard it but if you hit the c key then you'll actually reduce the the usage um or 
delete some of the messages that you're using. You have contacts, a camera, which is serviceable, nothing special. Again, it's very basic. You do have a calendar that you can add different things. Uh, click on events before October 4, things of that nature. You have an agenda. You can set up new events, month, settings, things of that nature. Uh, so it's very useful, again, for the basics. This is not going to be your everyday, I want all the apps in the world device because it doesn't allow them. You do have a clock, a calculator, and a sound recorder if you need them. You do have music and an FM radio, but you have to connect the headset. Again, you will have to connect via the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and you will have to use it that way because it doesn't have a proper antenna for it. I believe there's a couple of extra attachments that you can use, but again, I'm going to show you here. I downloaded an APK, which is right there, but it doesn't install it. They have configured it in such a way that it doesn't allow you to install any Android applications, which I think is a bummer because the device is able to run them. Uh, you do have the backup and restore, uh, which is going to be a method that I'm going to be testing in order to try to install applications in that way. But you do have voice commands right here, and it says that it's listening. So let's say that I want to call someone, you know, it will try to get me there. Call, and you're going to be there selecting contact. Or if you want to send a text message, text. You want to send a message, you select the contact. I have not added any contacts to the device just because when I'm doing my testing, I don't like to have any personal information so I can keep the, the videos clutter free. But it, again, it works very well like any other device. And the backup and restore mode is something that I'm going to be testing to see if it allows to do some of the Android applications. If it does, I'm going to include something in this area. And if it does, I'm also be including a tutorial. But as of right now, I will consider the Sony XP5 as a device to just think about calls, text messages that are very reliable, very crystal clear, and it's going to get there. It's VoLTE, so it works pretty much everywhere and also outside of the United States with limited compatibility, of course, and no hotspot because of the Verizon version doesn't allow hotspot if you change the SIM card from a non-Verizon SIM card. So it works decently well. It's a good device. I like it. So go get it if this is something that interests you. And uh, if it doesn't have the Android compatibility and you need a couple of the extra apps, there's other devices like the AGM M7 that can help you out there. But thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this device, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.